The rain had been relentless for hours, a constant drumming on the windows that seemed to grow louder as the night wore on. Each drop beat against the glass like a thousand tiny hammers, the rhythmic patter blending with the low rumble of distant thunder. The world outside your window was a blur of gray, smeared by rain and darkness. Every now and then, a flash of lightning would cut through the gloom, casting jagged shadows across the room for the briefest of moments before disappearing again. You sat at your desk, illuminated by the soft, bluish glow of your laptop screen. The light barely reached the corners of the room, where shadows lingered, heavy and oppressive. The room felt unusually cold, though the heater was on. You pulled your sweater tighter around yourself and tried to focus on the document in front of you. It was late, far later than you'd intended to stay up, but the ticking of the clock on the wall was the least of your concerns. There was something about tonight. Something you couldn't quite put your finger on. It wasn't the storm, storms came and went, and usually, they didn't bother you. But tonight, as the rain poured down and the wind howled outside, there was an unsettling tension in the air, like the quiet before something happens. You couldn't shake the feeling that something was off, though you told yourself it was nothing. Just nerves from being up too late, alone in the house. But that unease lingered, growing stronger as the hours slipped by. The unfinished project on your screen seemed like a good distraction, something to keep your mind occupied. You'd been meaning to finish it for days, and the constant pressure to get it done had weighed on you all week. Tonight seemed as good a time as any, better to focus on work than the nagging sense of dread creeping up the back of your neck. Still, you couldn't help glancing over your shoulder every few minutes. The house was quiet, too quiet. The only sounds were the hum of your laptop's fan and the endless rain outside. You listened carefully, half expecting to hear something else, but there was nothing. No creaks, no distant noises from upstairs, nothing to suggest you weren't alone. Yet the feeling persisted. You sighed, rubbing your tired eyes and forcing yourself to look back at the screen. Words blurred together, your mind wandering despite your best efforts to concentrate. Every time you refocused, you found yourself glancing out the window, half hoping, half fearing you'd see something, or someone, there. But all that greeted you was the storm. Lightning flashed again, illuminating the room for an instant, and you swore you saw something move in the reflection on the glass. You froze, heart pounding, staring at the window. Was it just a trick of the light? You waited, holding your breath, but no movement came. It must have been your imagination. Or maybe the wind had blown a branch too close to the window. You tried to shake off the feeling, but it clung to you like a wet blanket. The rain hammered on, relentless. You had left your phone on the kitchen counter earlier, face down next to the coffee maker. It was a conscious choice, part of your effort to avoid mindlessly scrolling through endless notifications and social media posts that only served to eat away your time. You told yourself you didn't need the distraction tonight. Focus, that was the plan. And for the first hour or so, it worked. Your eyes were glued to the screen in front of you, the steady rhythm of typing filling the room. But as the minutes slipped by, an odd sense of unease began to settle in. It was subtle at first, like a low hum at the edge of your consciousness, but it grew harder to ignore. The house felt too quiet, even with the storm outside. Every click of the keyboard, every rustle of paper on the desk felt amplified in the silence. The ticking of the clock on the wall seemed unnaturally loud, each second dragging out longer than it should. You could almost feel the weight of time passing, minute by minute. A strange urge tugged at you, check your phone. You hadn't planned on it. There was nothing you were waiting for, no important messages or calls you expected, and yet, the feeling was there, insistent, gnawing at the back of your mind. What if there was something you missed? A text from a friend, an urgent email, some small piece of information that might suddenly demand your attention. It was irrational, and you knew it. Still, the thought lingered, just out of reach, like an itch you couldn't quite scratch. You tried to ignore it at first, brushing it off as just the late hour playing tricks on your mind. You were tired, after all. Exhaustion could do funny things, make you anxious over nothing. Maybe that was all it was. You tried to refocus, 
fingers hovering over the keyboard as you forced yourself to concentrate. But the urge to check your phone didn't fade, it only grew stronger, the longer you resisted. Then came the notification sound. It was faint, almost drowned out by the rain outside, but unmistakable. A subtle ping, muffled by the distance between the kitchen and where you sat. The familiar chime sent a jolt through you, sharp and sudden. For a moment, you just sat there, frozen, listening. The sound had been quiet, but it was enough to pull your attention fully away from the screen. You hadn't expected anything. Who would be messaging you at this hour? You quickly ran through the possibilities, nothing urgent came to mind. But the uncertainty gnawed at you, more now than before. You stood up from your desk, pushing your chair back with a low scrape, and headed toward the kitchen. The hallway stretched out in front of you, dimly lit by the distant glow from your laptop. Your footsteps were soft against the hardwood, each one echoing faintly as you crossed the threshold into the darker parts of the house. The air felt heavier here, colder. You told yourself it was just the draft from the storm outside, but the creeping unease had returned, stronger than before. The kitchen was quiet when you entered, the faint smell of coffee from earlier still lingering in the air. Your phone sat on the counter exactly where you'd left it, its screen now glowing softly, casting a pale light across the darkened room. There was something unsettling about seeing it like that, face up, almost as if it was waiting for you. You reached for it, your hand hesitant. The screen was lit, displaying a single notification. You glanced at it, expecting a harmless message, maybe a reminder or some forgotten notification from earlier. But instead, what you saw made your stomach drop. A single message displayed on the screen. Are you alone? You stare at the screen, your heart thudding in your chest as the glow from the phone seems to grow colder, sharper. The message is short, but it hits you like a punch to the gut. No name, no contact, just an unknown number staring back at you, almost daring you to respond. Your stomach twists, a sickening knot forming as a slow, creeping dread crawls up your spine. Your thumb hovers over the screen, hesitating. The urge to swipe, to read the message in full, tugs at you, but something holds you back. A small, rational voice in the back of your mind tells you it's nothing. Probably just a prank, or a wrong number. Someone typing out a random message, sending it to the wrong person. Maybe a glitch in the system, some automated spam text. You try to convince yourself that's all it is. Just a harmless mistake. But the unease in your gut doesn't go away. The way the message appeared out of nowhere, the timing of it, right when you were already on edge, it felt too, deliberate. You shake your head, trying to push the thoughts away. It's nothing, you tell yourself. You lock the phone and place it back on the counter, face down, as if that simple action could banish the anxiety gnawing at the edges of your mind. You turn away, walking back down the hallway toward your desk, your footsteps unnaturally loud in the quiet house. But the silence is different now, heavier, more oppressive. The storm outside is no longer just background noise. The rain slaps against the windows in harsh sheets, the wind howling through the eaves like a living thing. It's louder, more forceful, rattling the windows as if something is trying to get in. The soft hum of your laptop and the faint ticking of the clock are the only sounds competing with the storm, but they feel distant, muted. You sit back down at your desk, blinking at the screen, trying to refocus on the project you were working on. But it's no use. The words in front of you blur together, your mind too distracted to make sense of them. The unease has settled into your bones now, a tight knot of anxiety that you can't shake. You try to remind yourself that you're safe, inside, locked away from the storm. There's no one here but you. No one to worry about. But still, the feeling lingers, that creeping sensation that something isn't right. Your eyes drift to the dark corners of the room, shadows pooling in the spaces where the faint light from your laptop doesn't reach. The house feels, different. It's familiar, but something about it is off. The darkness seems thicker, the silence louder, as if the storm is pressing in closer, suffocating the space around you. You shake your head again, trying to shake off the unease. You're being paranoid, that's all. It's late, you're tired, 
and your mind is playing tricks on you. You force yourself to focus on the screen, fingers poised over the keyboard, ready to type. And then you hear it. A sound, faint but unmistakable, cuts through the storm. You freeze, your hands hovering in mid-air, ears straining to listen. It's coming from upstairs, a slow, deliberate creak, like floorboards shifting under the weight of something heavy. The noise is subtle, almost drowned out by the wind outside, but it's there. You know it's there. Your heart skips a beat, your pulse quickening as your mind races through possibilities. The house settling, maybe? The wind pushing against the walls? But deep down, you know that's not it. The sound is too precise, too distinct. It's the sound of movement. Your breath catches in your throat, your body tensing as you wait for it to happen again. Another creak, slightly louder this time, closer. You glance up at the ceiling, your eyes wide, your mind screaming at you to do something, to move, to run, but your body remains frozen in place. You remind yourself again that you're alone, that there's no one else here. But the sound, that slow, creeping sound from above, tells you otherwise. You glance at the time. 1.13 AM. The numbers glow on your screen, the bright light of your laptop casting an eerie reflection on the wall behind you. You blink, rubbing your eyes, telling yourself it's too late for this, too late to deal with whatever paranoid thoughts are creeping into your mind. You're just tired. That's all it is. Just exhaustion getting the best of you. But then your phone buzzes again. The sound cuts through the silence like a blade, sharp and jarring. Your heart skips a beat. You don't want to look at it. Not after the first message, not after the strange creaks upstairs. But curiosity, or maybe some primal instinct, compels you to pick it up. Your hand is shaking slightly as you lift the phone, the screen lighting up your face as you unlock it with a quick swipe. Another message. Check the front door. Three words. That's all. But it's enough to make your blood run cold. You stare at the screen, disbelief and terror crashing over you in waves. The message is from the same unknown number, no name attached, just the words hanging in the air like a silent threat. Your mind races, grasping at explanations. A prank? Someone messing with you? But how could they know where you are? How could they know you were sitting here, alone in the middle of the night? You stand up so fast your chair scrapes harshly against the floor, the sound loud in the otherwise suffocating quiet of the house. Every rational part of you is screaming not to do it, not to move, not to let fear take over. But something stronger, curiosity, fear, or maybe just the need to confirm that this isn't real, pushes you forward. Your feet carry you down the hallway, slow and cautious, each step making the floorboards groan beneath your weight. The house feels different now, every shadow stretching longer, every noise amplified in the stillness. The rain is louder too, pounding against the windows in violent bursts, as if trying to break through. The air feels thick with tension, almost suffocating, as if it's pressing down on you, urging you to stop, to turn back. But you keep walking. The hallway seems unnaturally long now, as if the space between you and the front door has stretched, every step pulling you deeper into something unknown. The dim light from the kitchen fades behind you, leaving you in near darkness, your only guide the faint glow of the phone still clutched in your hand. You reach the door and stop, your heart pounding in your chest. Your hand hovers over the lock, fingers trembling. You tell yourself it's nothing. It has to be nothing. Maybe you imagined the message. Maybe the sound upstairs was just the wind, the house settling. You take a deep breath, forcing yourself to calm down, but it does little to steady your nerves. Slowly, you turn the lock, the metal mechanism clicking loudly in the quiet. You pull the door open just a crack, the cold night air rushing in, damp and heavy with the scent of rain. You pause, waiting for something to happen, for someone, or something, to be on the other side. But there's nothing. You pull the door open wider, the porch light casting a pale glow on the wet steps and the empty street beyond. The rain continues to fall in thick sheets, but the world outside is still, eerily quiet beneath the storm. 
You step out onto the porch, the chill of the rain immediately sinking into your skin. You glance around, heart racing, eyes darting from the darkened street to the bushes near the walkway, half expecting something, someone, to emerge from the shadows. But there's no one. Just the rain. Just the dark, empty porch and the rain-soaked street beyond. No shadowy figures lurking, no sign of anyone watching. Only the relentless storm, its cold droplets smacking the ground in heavy bursts. You step back inside, shaking your head, trying to calm the pounding of your heart. This is ridiculous, you think to yourself. You're jumping at shadows, letting the storm and the late hour mess with your mind. With a shaky breath, you shut the door firmly, turning the lock with deliberate care this time, the metallic click echoing louder than usual in the silent house. For good measure, you slide the deadbolt into place as well, the sound a reassuring confirmation of your safety. There, you think, exhaling deeply. Locked. Done. You make your way back to the kitchen, now feeling a little foolish. All that unease, all the creeping dread, it was for nothing. Just nerves. You're fine. It's fine. You reach for your phone, ready to laugh at yourself and get back to the project you've been avoiding for the past half hour. But the moment your hand touches the counter, your heart stops. It's not there. The spot where you were sure you'd left it is empty, bare except for a few stray coffee grounds and a folded dish towel. You frown, your mind racing. I put it right here. You know you did. You remember clearly, setting it face down on the cold countertop before walking toward the door. Your hand reaches out, patting the counter like it might suddenly reappear if you just touch the right spot. But no, nothing. A knot tightens in your stomach as you glance around the kitchen, eyes scanning the countertops, the sink, the floor. Maybe it fell. Maybe you bumped it when you walked by. But there's no sign of it. Nothing. You step back, biting your lip as your eyes dart frantically around the room. Where is it? You check the floor again, half expecting to find it wedged beneath the fridge or kicked under the table. But no, the floor is bare. Empty. The knot in your stomach tightens further, cold dread creeping back in. I left it right here, didn't I? Suddenly, a sound breaks through the silence, a soft, unmistakable buzzing. You freeze. It's your phone. But the sound isn't coming from the counter. It isn't coming from where you thought you left it. It's coming from behind you. You spin around, heart hammering in your chest, the dim light from the hallway barely illuminating the space beyond the kitchen. For a moment, you don't move, don't breathe. You just stand there, listening as the buzzing sound fills the room, steady and insistent. Your phone. It's somewhere close. But not where it should be. The soft, persistent vibration continues as if calling to you, demanding your attention. Slowly, your eyes drift to the far end of the kitchen, toward the darkened hallway that leads back to the rest of the house. The sound is coming from somewhere beyond that, somewhere deeper, where the shadows seem thicker, more oppressive. Your heart races as you take a hesitant step forward, your mind screaming at you to stop, to turn around, to run. But your feet keep moving, drawn toward the sound, toward the mystery of where your phone has gone. The buzzing grows louder as you approach the doorway, the shadows stretching long and dark across the floor. You swallow hard, your throat dry, every instinct telling you to turn back. But curiosity, or fear, pushes you forward. You round the corner, the hallway stretching out before you, dimly lit by the faint glow from a nearby window. The buzzing is louder now, clearer, coming from the living room. You whirl around, the hairs on the back of your neck standing on end, and see it, your phone, sitting on the edge of a table. You didn't put it there. You know you didn't. And then, it buzzes again. A new message. Your phone vibrates again in your hand, the faint glow of the screen flickering as if struggling against the darkness that's slowly creeping in from the edges of the room. Your breathing becomes shallow, your heart pounding in your chest as you hesitate for a moment unsure if you even want to see what it says. But you can't help it, some sick sense of curiosity, or perhaps pure terror, forces your fingers to move. 
With trembling hands, you lift the phone closer, squinting as the bright screen cuts through the gloom. For a second, the message is blurry, your mind refusing to process the words. Then, slowly, the text sharpens into focus, and your blood turns to ice. Stop looking for your phone. The message is so absurd, so impossible, that for a second, you don't even react. You just stare at it, blinking, your mind desperately trying to rationalize what you're seeing. Stop looking for your phone. But you found it. You weren't looking for it anymore. How could they know? The realization hits you like a freight train. Someone, somehow, is watching you. They've been watching you all along. The eerie silence in the house, the messages, the sudden disappearance and reappearance of your phone, it all fits together now in a horrifying, surreal puzzle. You aren't alone. The air in the room seems to grow thicker, pressing in around you, heavy with the weight of your growing panic. Your hand shakes uncontrollably, the phone nearly slipping from your grip as the message stares back at you, mocking, taunting. Your mind screams at you to move, to run, to do something, but your legs feel frozen, paralyzed by fear. And then, without warning, the lights go out. Complete and utter darkness engulfs the room, swallowing you whole. The phone screen, once the only source of light, blinks off, plunging you into a suffocating blackness so thick it feels tangible. You stand there, rooted to the spot, the sudden silence overwhelming your senses. No hum of electricity, no faint glow from the appliances. Just the sound of your own ragged breathing and the relentless drumming of rain against the windows. Your mind races, every muscle in your body tense and screaming for you to move, but you can't. The darkness is so thick, it's disorienting, like you've been dropped into some void where nothing exists beyond this moment. For a second, you wonder if you've gone blind, if you'll ever see light again. But then, faintly, you hear something. A soft sound, barely audible over the pounding storm outside. It's slow, deliberate, like the quiet shuffle of feet across the floor. Your breath catches in your throat, panic rising as you strain to listen. It's coming from somewhere nearby, just a few feet away. The hairs on the back of your neck stand on end, every nerve in your body alive with terror. You want to scream, to call for help, but the sound dies in your throat. The air feels thick, choking, as if you're trapped in some terrible nightmare, and no one can hear you. Suddenly, there's a flash, a flicker of light from your phone. The screen lights up again, casting a faint, eerie glow across the room. You gasp, eyes locking onto the device in your hand, but the message you see now is worse than anything you could have imagined. I'm right behind you. Your blood runs cold, your entire body going rigid as the words sink in. For a split second, you're too terrified to turn around, every instinct telling you not to look, not to move. But the feeling of something, someone, in the room with you is undeniable now. You can feel it, that presence, looming just behind you, close enough that you swear you can feel the faintest brush of cold air against your skin. You don't want to look. You don't want to know. But you have no choice. Slowly, painfully, you turn around. The phone slips from your hand, clattering to the floor with a deafening crash as you come face to face with, nothing. Just the dark, empty room. Then you hear it. Faint at first, barely noticeable over the pounding rain and the rapid beating of your own heart, a sound that shouldn't be there. A giggle. Light and airy, like a child's laughter, but distorted by the heavy silence in the room. It's coming from somewhere close. Too close. You freeze, your breath catching in your throat, eyes darting around the room. The sound repeats, a little louder this time, and unmistakably coming from the closet at the far end of the hallway. Your stomach drops. Every instinct tells you to stay put, to ignore it, to leave it alone, but you can't. Something about that sound, about this night, has gripped you, and now you're too far in to turn back. With trembling hands, you walk slowly toward the closet. Every step feels heavier, the air thick with tension, the shadows in the hallway stretching longer, darker. The soft giggle echoes again, and your pulse quickens. This isn't real. It has to be a trick. 
But as your hand reaches the closet door handle, the cold metal sending shivers up your spine, you feel a sense of dread that's impossible to shake. You hesitate for a moment, hand hovering over the door. Then, with a deep breath, you turn the handle and pull it open. The door creaks on its hinges, the sound slicing through the stillness like a blade. For a second, everything feels frozen, time itself standing still. You hold your breath, eyes wide, expecting, what? You don't even know. Something horrible. But instead, there's just darkness, the inside of the closet seemingly empty, nothing unusual at first glance. But before you can exhale in relief, the silence is shattered by a chorus of voices, high-pitched, cheerful, and completely unexpected. Trick or treat. The sudden outburst of laughter makes you jump back, your heart slamming against your ribs as figures burst out from the shadows of the closet, their voices filling the room with a mix of childish glee and mischief. You blink, disoriented, trying to make sense of what's happening. And then, in the flickering light, you see him, your best friend Bill, grinning ear to ear, a plastic pumpkin bucket in his hand, surrounded by a couple of other familiar faces, all dressed in ridiculous Halloween costumes. It takes a moment for your brain to catch up, for the adrenaline to drain out of your system, but when it does, the fear that had gripped you just moments before melts away in an instant. Relief floods through you, and despite yourself, you let out a shaky laugh, clutching your chest as you try to calm the pounding in your heart. Bill steps forward, still chuckling, clearly pleased with himself. Man, you should have seen your face, he says, laughing even harder. I thought you were going to faint. You shake your head, feeling both ridiculous and strangely amused. You, absolute jerk, you say, but there's no real anger in your voice. Just disbelief that you'd fallen for it. Bill gives you a playful punch on the shoulder. Come on, it's Halloween. Had to get you somehow, right? You can't help but laugh now, the tension slowly easing out of your body as you realize it was all just a prank. The eerie messages, the sudden power outage, the creepy noises, it was all orchestrated by Bill, probably sitting outside with his phone the entire time, watching you freak out. The group keeps laughing, their laughter contagious now, and soon you're all standing there in the hallway, the fear that had gripped you nothing but a fading memory. The storm still rages outside, but inside, the house feels warmer, lighter. As you shake your head at your friend's antics, a smile creeps across your face. It was a good prank. You'll admit that. But deep down, in a quiet corner of your mind, you can't quite shake the memory of that first message. 